Shares of Tesla finishing slightly lower after the SEC asked a judge to hold Elon Musk in contempt for violating a settlement agreement reached in December. The SEC based its request on what it called an inaccurate tweet from Musk last week regarding Tesla's production volume. Musk then called out the SEC for its lack of oversight after a Twitter user pointed out that Musk's initial tweet didn't actually move the stock, but that the SEC's complaint did. Musk writing, quote, this has now happened several times. Something is broken with SEC oversight. A judge has given Musk until March 11th to explain why he shouldn't be held in contempt. And joining us now to discuss this is Michael Liftick, former SEC Deputy Chief of Staff from Quinn Emanuel Trial Lawyers, and Russell Duncan, former Senior SEC Trial Attorney from Shulman Rogers Dental. Gentlemen, good afternoon to you both. Michael, I'll start with you. Does, does the SEC have a case here? I think this is a message case. Elon Musk has been clearly dismissive of the SEC ever since the settlement was entered into. And I think the SEC is trying to send a message that their settlements must be taken seriously. My experience is the SEC is usually slow to move to contempt. And what we see here is a one strike and you're out policy. But Michael, overall, do you think they've, the SEC has a strong case with this particular interchange of, of tweets? Well, I think on the merits, it's clear from the SEC's order that the parties do seem to agree that Mr. Musk did not follow the precise procedures laid out in the settlement agreement. But on the other hand, there's an optics issue for them. The tweet was sent after market was closed and it was corrected within four hours. And Mr. Musk has started to lay out in the public record his defenses. So I think he's got some defenses there. Russell, do you agree that uh, Mr. Musk has some uh, clear reasons for defense? I'm not sure that he has clear reasons for defense. Um, as uh, I agree with Michael, the SEC doesn't really have a, a, much of a sense of humor with respect to its negotiated orders. Here, I think his problem is not only substantive, but procedural. There were clear procedures placed by, placed by the judge on him by which he had to comply in order to send out these tweets. And he clearly did not. Uh, that was admitted by his lawyers and, its, and their correspondence with the SEC. So I think he's in a position where he's going to have to be eating a humble pie and basically begging for forgiveness. It's the procedural thing that I think gives him the strongest problem as opposed to the substantive thing. So key question here, Michael, and of course you did see the stock basically come back off the lows of the day, I think close around, around the flat line. There seems to be a belief, at least among investors, that maybe you could get Musk to you know, remedy, remedy this situation and adhere to its settlement with the SEC, but that's not going to mean him being ousted as a CEO. Is that the right way to think about this? That sounds about, that sounds about right. Uh, civil contempt is designed to coerce compliance with future orders. It's not designed to be punitive. So if you think about idiosyncratic tweeting, it's hard to think of a remedy that can force him in the future to comply with these procedures. Maybe there's a fine, maybe there's additional procedures around his tweeting, but they're not going to be able to renegotiate the entire order and say remove him as the CEO or something like that. Russell, you say that it's on the procedural grounds that the SEC maybe has the strongest uh, case here, but doesn't the procedural, the, the argument that he violated the procedure hinges on what you consider material, right, a material bit of information that you're putting out there. Um, so are they going to play semantics with that perhaps, that uh, saying, well, we kind of said 500,000 cars this year was within the range of what we previously stated uh, and all the rest of it. Is that where we have to have this argument over what's material from a CEO? Well, I agree in certain circumstances what's material is very relevant to what the SEC does. But here they have put in place certain procedures, including uh, you know, basically a 24-hour uh, period in which he's got to get approval. They, that approval itself expires after 48 hours. And it's clear that either Mr. Musk or his attorneys, though I, my guess is it's Mr. Musk, decided he didn't want to comply with those procedures. The SEC doesn't look at specifically at this violation as whether or not it's a material violation. It, it's concerned more about the absence of Mr. Musk's compliance with the terms of the court order. And courts have a great deal of power in which to enforce their orders, including, and I, I don't think I agree with Michael, I don't think it's the sort of case that they would do this, but they do have a right to basically blow up the whole deal. Uh, there is a requirement that individuals, when they sign these negotiated settlements, that they comply in full. And the SEC always reserves its right to come back to court and ask that the agreement be vacated if the individual is not in compliance with the terms of the court's order.